you didn't have to kill him. The young man said quietly, looking up at his companion riding atop a midnight black and noticeably rotted steed. Him? The companion said questioningly, his pale skin and deep red eyes showing his vampiric nature. Features the young man shared. The guard. You didn't have to kill him. The flesh eater. Don't tell me you felt for that mad monster. He would have eaten you eventually if the lady hadn't ordered me to rescue you. He wasn't insane. He still had his mind. He could have been reasoned with. Are you telling me I killed a member of the Flesh Eater Courts that wasn't cursed by madness? Huh. That is definitely going in my journal. Anyway, what's done is done, young blood. Stop worrying about the unworthy dead and worry about surviving the next few nights. Because right now, there is much you need to know to survive as a vampire in our Lord's Court. First off, know that any stories you may have heard in your mortal life about vampires are fairy tales. We don't need permission to enter a home, can cross and even swim in rivers just fine. And Hish's light won't burn us, although it can really sting the eyes. The only way to harm a vampire is with steel, claw and magic, just like anything else in the realms. But the only way to truly kill a vampire is to completely destroy their physical form. And that is no easy task, for even a young blood like you is far stronger and faster than any mortal human. And if you are lucky enough to survive a century or two, that strength and speed will reach levels beyond most elves and Uroks. You are also a well of Shaishian magic, allowing you to summon and control death rattles and dead walkers much easier than any mortal necromancer ever could. Our only real weakness is the hunger, the compulsion to consume the blood of the living, blood we need to not only survive, but thrive, as the blood of the strong-willed and powerful can empower any vampire lucky enough to drink it. Now you seem like a sensitive soul, young blood, so you are probably thinking you can force yourself to abstain, I wouldn't suggest it, because if you don't feed that hunger, that hunger will feed on you, consuming your mind and mutating your body, turning you into a Vargeist, a winged horror that is monstrous of appearance and deadly in form. Any morality you might have had lost as you rend the flesh of the living in a blood maddened feeding frenzy. Trust me. It's better to just feed. At least then, you can show mercy to your prey. Now, when you reach the castle and enter the court, you will be required to socialize. My suggestion, the first thing you do is head straight to the vampire lord and show him the deepest respect. You can recognize him by the aura of power he exudes and the bladed armor he wears covered in the sigils of his dynasty. Dynasty? I'll explain dynasties later, but for now, think of them as noble houses. Now you better hope the Lord accepts your presence, or at least thinks so little of you that he decides you are not worth trying to remove, because young blood, he is the most powerful of us and could end your life with but one finger. He is centuries old and steeped so much in the energy of death that his mere presence in battle is enough to empower any nearby undead. And on the battlefield, he is a sight to behold, atop his zombie dragon, with his vampiric sword removing the blood from his victims, and his death lance inflicting heavy wounds on even the most armored foes. Truly, just the sight of him is enough to cause anyone to feel utter powerlessness and soul-draining terror. So I suggest if you find yourself overwhelmed, make sure to cower. He would appreciate the show of respect. Now sadly, the lady of the court, your sire, won't be there to greet you today. She is busy putting down a rebellious township with her handmaidens, most likely riding around in her coven throne. A carriage of few sinew and bone held aloft by a procession of tormented souls. 
If you know anything about the lady, you'll know she doesn't want to sully her hands with the blood of lesser foes. So she lets the spectral claws and blades of those souls kill them for her. And as they do their work, she looks upon a scrying pool that takes the form of an enchanted bowl filled with blood. Her handmaidens, all of whom were chosen for their talents as augurs and harpsbuses, look for worthy opponents for the lady and also give tactical insights to her servants in battle. All of this so she can find victims to entrance with a glance. The most intriguing will be honored with a blood kiss, serving as her champions and paramours until she gets bored. Others are killed with her stilettos, or devoured by her handmaidens. Is that how she found you, young blood? On a battlefield somewhere? I was a farmer. Oh, I see. Hmm. I guess she is slumming it this decade. Anyway, beyond the Lord and Lady, there are two groups of vampires you should do your best to befriend. The first are the Sanguinarchs. In the same way some wealthy mortals will obsess over wine, these vampires are obsessed with finding the right vintage of blood. They are the types of vampires most likely to secretly embed themselves into mortal society to give them a greater variety of flavors to sample. While there, they play the part of aristocrats and noble liaisons and manipulate the bloodlines of noble families through carefully chosen marriages for centuries, all so that the final result is blood that becomes a truly indulgent concoction. Some sanguinarchs believe that only battle can add the right types of flavor to blood. They request to fight alongside the Lord, offering their services for a chance to consume the blood of various warriors. Draped across their fine cushions on their bloodseeker pelicans, they make for an unnerving sight as they drift into the battlefield. They are also masters of exsanguinatory magic, some of them able to call forth torrents of blood from their victims' eyes, nose, and mouths into their chalices, mixing the blood together and offering it to their allies to give them a burst of unnatural vigor. Now admittedly, the Sanguinars are a bit… stuffy, even by vampire standards. If you want to join a group that is a bit more down to earth, may I suggest the Blood Knights, elite vampiric warriors who have dedicated their immortal lives to mastering the art of combat. In their scalloped plate, and riding upon hulking undead chargers called nightmares, they proudly ride in front of grave lord hosts, riders of ruin, who trample lesser foes. In their search for worthy opponents they can skewer with their templar lances and blades. You may notice some oversized bats hanging around. I suggest you don't try to shoo them away. Those are fell bats. Creatures crafted through dark magic and fed a diet of tainted blood. Creatures that can swoop down on you quite quickly with a single-minded ferocity. And as they feed on you, some of the blood they take from you will be stored in their throat. Those throats later cut and the blood consumed by those vampires who would love to taste the blood of a newly turned fool. Ah, there it is. The vampire said as he quickly turned his head forward once again. Following his companion's gaze, the young vampire washed as a large, imposing castle slowly came into view. The intimidating structure seemed to be formed of strange black stones, its upper stories covered in writhing, flying forms that the young vampire could only assume were bats, or something worse. Oh, by the way, young blood, what was your name? Before the young vampire could answer, the other raised his hand. Before you answer, remember, you are no longer mortal. Your old farmer name may no longer be suitable for your new life. Think hard on how you want to be known from now on. The young vampire thought deeply, thinking of the various stories his mother had told him in his youth, of legendary heroes and villains until one name seemed to rise above the others. Rysanius, the young vampire said with as much haughtiness as he could manage. Hmm. The older vampire hummed 
as he closed his eyes and placed a finger on his chin. Rysanius, noble, flowing, pretentious, perfect, young blood. I think you might actually survive the night. With that, he gave a nod of almost respect to the younger vampire and turned his head back to the castle, his mount speeding into a steady trot, forcing the young vampire Rysanius to quicken his pace beside him. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on some of the vampires for the Soul Blight Grave Lords. If you like it, please like, subscribe, comment, press the little bell so you know where I post, etc. You know the drill. Just so that the YouTube guys know I exist, and hopefully more people who might be interested in my comment, my content, I love words, are might find it. If you really like it and you're inclined and only have the cash, please also consider sending a little money away to my Patreon or my coffee account. The extra money gives that time I need to work on these stories I love. Anyway, thanks for listening slash watching and uh, see you next time.